What's going on guys? Sharpshot here. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. So for today's video, we're going to be looking at one common mistake for every killer and how to fix it. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Trapper. Putting traps directly under a window or a pallet is a big mistake because with the window, if a survivor fast vaults over it, they won't get trapped. And all the survivor has to do is drop the pallet to eliminate the trap out of play. Instead, place the traps a little further out so that if they fast vault or if they drop the pallet, they'll still get trapped anyways. Wraith. I'm cloaking too early or too far away from survivors is a big mistake because this will give time for the survivors to react and put a lot of distance in front of you. So your speed boost will only be used to catch up to the survivors not actually hit them instead go right up to them and then uncloak or if you see they're running to a window or a pallet try and body block those and then uncloak and you'll be able to get a free m1 billing being too reliant on your chainsaw can be a big mistake so you have to know when to use your m1 or when to use your chainsaw using your m1 to get a hit and put some pressure on with the injuries can also be a good option and actually be faster the survivor is really good at countering your chainsaws nurse wasting your second blink too often is a pretty big mistake this will make you that your cooldown to use your blinks again a lot longer if you're traveling around the map no matter what only blink once and if you're in a chase use your first blink to go right where you had just seen the survivor and then either use your second blink to go to where they you see them next or if they had double back just m1 them and save your second blink myers going into your tier three too early is a big mistake because this wastes precious exposed time the best thing you want to do is to 99 your exposed go right up to a survivor and then activate it so you can get the insta down right away hag the biggest mistake is actually playing her just kidding is placing too many traps in one specific area of gens or hooks this can be good in a three gen situation but you want to make sure that you're also saving some traps to place in key high traffic loops and areas and also saving some mid loops so you can place one right in the center of that loop to shut that loop down and then force the survivor to either try and bait the trap or move to an entirely new loop doctor using his snap to only gain information is a pretty big mistake his static blast actually gives each survivor hit an extra tier in their madness so using it in an area where you know survivors already are is really good to pressure the survivors with madness instead of using it in an area where you don't know if survivors are and either hitting nobody or only hitting one survivor huntress being too reliant on hatchets can be a big mistake because you'll have to reload more often instead putting an extra five seconds into going up and m wanting survivor instead of throw a hatchet it and potentially even miss it could save you the time from having to reload and it could also save hatchets for when you really need them in order to down a survivor in a chase bubba not respecting pallets can actually be a big mistake with your chainsaw because if a survivor times it right they can actually pallet stun you while you're in your chainsaw suite so instead of bull rushing into an undropped pallet with a survivor there bait it by pretending you're going for the bull rush then back up and the survivor will drop it and you can go right back in and then sweep through the pallet completely wasting it freddy never baiting a gen teleport is a big mistake because if survivors see you teleport to a gen every time blood pops up on it they're always going to immediately run away and you won't be able to catch any survivor by surprise and you'll be playing a catch-up game in a chase so be unpredictable with your teleport sometimes actually teleport sometimes fake it so that the survivors will end up sticking to gen and when you actually teleport you'll be able to catch them by surprise to get a free m1 pig wasting all of your reverse bear traps in the early game and not saving any for end game is really bad ideally you want to save one or two pig traps for when there's a around one gen left that if that gen gets finished those survivors with bear traps on their heads will literally not be able to escape the trial and it'll buy you a lot of time to actually down some more survivors and you can also get a cheeky kill for those survivors that don't know that you can't escape with an active bear trap on your head clown only throwing clown bottles where the survivor currently is at is a big mistake you actually want to throw your clown bottles to where the survivor is going and use your bottles to zone the survivors to where you want them to go instead for example if you see a survivor running towards a pallet throw your bottle at the pallet instead of where they are right now so that they won't go to the pallet spirit some might disagree but i think faking a phase walk is really bad with the directional phase walk noises survivors can easily tell if you're in your phase walk or not survivor doesn't hear the little whispers you're gonna obviously know you're not phase walking instead go in your phase walk and fake one direction and go quickly in the other so that the sound throws them off lesion saving your feral frenzy for the perfect moment is a big mistake if you see a survivor and you have a feral frenzy just go for it because with legion's new buff he gets it back so often even if you only hit one or two survivors it's not the end of the world playing only using throw up on survivors is a big mistake also use a throw up on objects that survivors can interact with so that when they do interact with those objects they're gonna get sick without you even having 
to chase them. Ghost face. We've all done this, but fully marking a survivor too far away is pretty bad because this will waste their exposed timer. Instead, you want a 99 there mark and then fully mark them when you're right up next to them so you can guarantee the instant out. Demogorgon. Relying on your shred too much is a bad idea. If you use it well, it's a great power, but if you overuse it in a loop, survivors will catch on to it and bait your shred. If you miss and go completely outside of a loop, it completely resets it and it could potentially extend the chase way longer than if you had just M1. Oni. Wasting Demon Fury to find survivors is a bad idea. You generally want to activate it when you see a survivor and then after downing that survivor, if you don't know where any other survivors are, it's better off to just end your Demon Fury and save that progress for your next Demon Fury that you'll get back way quicker now that it's not fully depleted. Deathslinger. Pulling survivors inefficiently can actually cost you a lot of hits. In an open area, when you're reeling a survivor in, you want to back up so that they're pulled towards you faster. And if the window or a pallet is between you and the survivor you're reeling, you want to reel towards them so you can hit them over the pallet or the window. Pyramid Head. Only using your Trail of Torment outside of chases makes it useless. Outside of a chase, if a survivor sees a Trail of Torment, they're just going to crouch over it and not get tormented. So use your Trail of Torments in a tight chase. So if the survivor wants to keep looping around that loop, they're going to have to go through your Trail of Torment or they're going to have to find a new loop outright. Blight. Wasting more rush tokens to recover from a bad rush is really bad because you might end up further out from where you wanted to be having wasted all of your tokens and then have to wait even longer to reuse your tokens. Instead, if you find yourself going out into orbit, it might just be better to end your rush, walk back to where you wanted to be, and then you'll get your tokens back even quicker. Twins. Leaving Dormant Victor and Charlotte in random locations is actually a huge missed opportunity. Whenever you're transitioning from Victor to Charlotte or vice versa, you always want to leave your Dormant Twin in a high traffic area so that if you go back to that twin, you'll be right back into the action. And Dormant Charlotte can actually body block, so you can use that to your advantage as well. Trickster. Saving your main event for the perfect moment is a bad idea because that opportunity to down multiple survivors might not ever come. Instead, if you have your main event and you see a healthy survivor using it on them and quickly downing them might be really effective and if you keep hitting your knives after it you'll get back your main event really quickly anyways nemesis ignoring your zombies is a big missed opportunity while you're tearing up hitting a zombie with your tentacle will give you contamination and using zombies in a loop to your advantage by zoning the survivors into a zombie and kind of sandwiching the survivor will make it so that the survivor will have to get hit by either you or the zombie you can also use them for really good information if you see their auras with their arms raised up it means that they're chasing a survivor pinhead while chasing a survivor in an open area using his chain to try and close the distance between you two is a really big risk with low reward because if you miss the gap between you and the survivor will be even bigger instead try and use your chains inside of a tight loop that a survivor isn't leaving so that even if you do miss the survivor will still be in that loop and you won't have any ground to make up artist using all of your crows at one time is a big mistake because doing this will make it so that you can't use any of your crows again for a really long time instead conserving your crows and only using one or two at a time will make it so you can then use more crows in a certain period of time for example if you're in a tight loop using one crow to block off a pallet instead of using all three is really good but using all three crows outside of a chase to find survivors on gens is always still a great idea on real only using your manifestation to teleport outside of chases this is a missed opportunity because if you teleport to a tv that a survivor is going near inside of a chase it can throw off the survivor and allow you to get a free M1 after teleporting with your small sprint burst that you get. And it'll also give them and any survivor near that TV one stack of condemn. So yeah, guys, those are the common mistakes for every killer. Make sure to comment down below some more tips for every killer for the newcomers. So yeah, guys, that's been a video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you're new. This has been Sharpshot, and I will see you guys in the next video.